Hello everyone, Denzel Rodriguez here, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. Today, in this video, I record, it is May 2021. I'm going to walk you through a velocity banking example, really a real life case study scenario of a client. I'm gonna take you back in time when this person became a client, some of the things that they initially implemented, the conversations that we had, fast forward to 2021 May today as I record this video. We're gonna look at their current numbers, where they stand financially, the goals, and the future steps that we are looking to potentially implement based on a couple of things working in our favor. So we're gonna look at some leverage strategies, uh, a creative financial strategy that this person can continue to implement as they do velocity banking, debt snowball, personal finance, building that financial freedom lifestyle that they want to create for themselves, amen. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the board. So on the left, we have an individual, woman on the board, 48 years old, making 5,300 a month. Expenses are $4,931 per month. Total debt at the time when this person became a client with me, they were at $82,063. Their cash flow was $369. They had roughly 3,000 cash on hand, emergency fund, savings, all together. No debt tool. This person became a client in July 14, 2020, during a pandemic. Prior to becoming a client, they did the pregame work. What did they do? They watched my videos in depth. They got to know, like, and trust me. They studied the work. They ran the numbers. They set goals. By the time they became a client, boom, they were prepared. They had their numbers in line, their four major numbers. They were not playing. They had their goals established. I was facilitating the material that they were already learning and implementing. That is my role. Facilitate, guide, provide the options, and then say, hey, this is where, uh, this is what this looks like. If you go this route, this is what this looks like. If you go this way, this is what this looks like. If you go that way. So with that being said, fast forward to today, May 12th, 2021, right? This was the last conversation I had with them. I'm recording this video roughly a week later. During this window period, they did not have a debt tool the whole entire time. The only tools we were using were credit cards and 0% credit cards, cashback rewards, credit cards, things like that. So we were doing a mix of debt snowball, right? Making extra payments, but also running bills through credit, getting cashback rewards, building our credit, establishing a relationship with a bank that offers the tools that we want to eventually apply for. This person went up and down in debt. They acquired more debt because they had to do some things. They paid that debt down. So in the personal finance world, right, when you're in your own economy, there's going to be swings. There's going to be ups and downs. It's not all magic, right? We don't do magic here on this YouTube channel. We simply run the numeros. So with that being said, we're now at $5,598, expenses dropped to 3,401. Yes, we paid off debt. Yes, we reduced expenses. We cut back. We became aware of where every dollar was going. Debt currently stands at $68,155. Their cash flow went from 369 to 2,197 over this period of time during a pandemic. Cash on hand increased to 14,000. They did sell something that um, allowed them to have more cash, right? So between working more, increasing income, reducing expenses, becoming aware of where every dollar goes, all of this plays into our velocity banking strategy. We take all strategies, we combine them together so that we can execute and move forward. We stay open-minded. We look at different opportunities to recapture cash flow O. That's what we want. So our goal now, 2021, May, uh, by June or sooner, we want to apply for a unsecured personal revolving line of credit, roughly about 20K, according to the bank that she's looking at. And we wanna get a rate below 10%. I believe she'll get something below eight, I believe. So we'll see how that goes. That is what's currently in the making. 
Now, if we were to get approved for a $20,000 personal line of credit hypothetical, we're going to simply follow the uh, fundamental rule of leverage in terms of my personal rule that I use on most of my clients is I start off with the 66% rule. If cash flow is 2,197 times that by 12, that's 26,364. This person's in a very good position to violate the rule of 66%, but we're gonna start our basis point. We're gonna start at 66%, so $13,200 is what I would take out of my personal line of credit to tackle some of the debts that she has. These are bad debts that she wants to get rid of. The goal for her is to be debt free. So regardless of whatever information we're looking at on the internet, you need to know what your goal is and then find people who align with that goal that can help you get there faster. During that process, we want to be open minded to other strategies. Hey, does it make sense to pay off debt right now or should I invest? Do I stick to my moral beliefs and faith, right? Is it a moral thing? Is it a religion thing? Is it a faith thing that I need to wipe out all my debt first and then I can start from a position of investing and scaling and building a business? Whichever route you go, as long as you are clear and in alignment and you have somebody that is also in alignment with what you want to do, that increases your chances of success, I would say, a lot better than somebody trying to convince you to do something else because they put that FOMO, that fear of missing out. Oh, if I don't leverage, you know, oh, if I don't, you know, oh my God, God's going to hate me if I don't do this. Uh, so we need to get real in alignment with our morals, beliefs, behaviors, attitudes, the way we approach finances, your relationship with the Monet. We got to get clear on that before we start looking outside for help and support. We have to make sure we personally can uh, comprehend what we are learning in the marketplace and creating that narrative for our lifestyle that we want to live. Right? So that that's very important. I like to say that when I talk to my clients, I like to say that every strategy works, right? Every financial strategy is correct. I like to just put that theory out there into my clients' uh, uh, heads is saying, hey, what if every financial strategy is correct? It will get to the end goal of creating financial freedom. The issue is, the, the variable is you. How effective is strategy number one, strategy number two, strategy number three, based on your current behaviors, knowledge, information, the amount of work you've studied, the amount of commitment, the amount of discipline that you have. Th those are the variables you really need to solve for and not say, well, strategy one is better than two because of this and that and that. Well, it's kind of like, uh, say, playing a video game. Any video game, any type of campaign mode, you start on board one, level one, right? In order to get to level two, you got to beat level one. In order to get to level three, you got to beat level one and two. The point is you don't stay at level one. So let's just say financial strategy number one is pay off all your debt. Avoid everything else. Avoid debt like the plague. Okay, cool. Let's, let's start there, you know, and let's see how you go. Let's progress, right? Okay. You got it down. You got your budget. You got your emergency fund. You're, you're contributing to your 401k, you're saving for retirement, you've got your little Roth and you're this, and you're, 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 you're uh, scrimping and scrapping, you're, you're saving, you know, you're doing all these wonderful things. Okay, cool. Level two says, hmm, I think you should build credit. You should have good personal credit, maybe even business credit. Hey, you should consider using these credit cards. It didn't cost you anything to use it. You actually get cash back. You're actually incentivized to use these specific credit cards to run these specific bills through your finances. I mean, we could be recapturing roughly 1500 to upwards of $3,000 plus dollars per year on money that you already spend, on money that's already leaving your economy. We can recapture those dollars and put those dollars into the original goal of paying off debt. Okay, cool. 
So now you become open-minded. You're like, okay, well, maybe not all debt is bad. All right, so level one was great. Level two, nice. Okay, level three says, hmm, maybe we can potentially leverage, borrow from Peter to pay Paul, offset our borrowing costs to zero, in fact, make money when we borrow. Is that a possibility? Let's run the numeros and see where we get, right? So as you progress in your personal finances, as you are watching my videos, watching the scenarios, be sure to be in alignment with where, what level you're currently at in your finances, your disciplines, your, your behaviors, your attitudes, so that you're able to like say, okay, I get it, I get it. Maybe I'm not ready for that. Maybe I'm not ready for that. I just need to do this. Okay, cool. In this scenario, this is what we're doing. We're simply wiping out bad debt. It causes stress in the household. She wants to release stress. This is a personal thing, personal finance, right? Personally wanna remove stress, personally wanna remove debt. And then we can talk investing, cash value life insurance, infinite banking, 10X, da da da, right? We can, we can do that over time. The point is, as I work with my clients, I promise you, we do not stay in just pay off debt. We don't stay there. Once I'm debt free, then what? I'm debt free and broke. I don't have anything, I don't have any assets, right? So we're constantly working that other side of our brain, that creative side, the logical side is doing this, but the creative side is thinking, how do I 10X? How do I build? How do I do this? Create this collaboration, do this partnership, get in this fund, get in that uh, business franchise, do this deal, do that. Okay, let's come back to the board. So, <clears throat> recap. If we get approved for a $20,000 personal line of credit between May and June of 2021, we're gonna chunk roughly 13,200. That's our starting number. And yes, we could go a little bit higher because our cash flow is so high in comparison to what the debt tool credit limit would be or what we would uh, initially get approved for. The most attractive debts to go after is typically the smallest one, right? So we got this student loan right here, 10,764 is the balance, 549 is the monthly payment. 10.2% interest rate, amortized, right? If I get anything below 10% on a PLOC, simple interest, there's a difference, okay? The next most attractive debt is this credit card right here that's on 0%. It expires in the next month, June 2021, towards the end of June. Monthly payment right now is 175, balance is 13,400. Now, there are some interesting things that are gonna occur, we, we need to get more detailed on. So after our phone call, had her you know, work on getting this information, she'll report back to me. The information that we need to get is we need to find out if this was a 0% credit card that was on deferred interest or actual 0% when it expires, then I start to accrue interest, okay? If this is a deferred interest credit card, we definitely want to tackle this over this. Although it's smaller, payments higher, cash flows higher, I do not want to get smacked with an extra, say two grand of interest on top of this, and then the payment goes to like double, maybe 300 or more, because the interest rate on this is over 21%. So we don't wanna get blindsided. If that's not the case, if it's true zero, if it expires in June 2021, right, and it goes to 22% and the monthly payment is definitely going to go higher, we might want to let that be and we might actually want to pay this off in full and the difference of our chunk would go here. So come, come June is around the time that we would have the approval of the personal line of credit. Worst case scenario, I get denied, okay? If I get denied, right, or I would say the, the yeah, that's the worst case. I get completely denied, they don't counter, they don't offer anything lower than 20, just complete denial. Highly unlikely in this particular situation because of all the pregame work that we've done, but it can still happen, right? So if we get denied for the PLOC, she does have 14K cash on hand. We could potentially 
get a secured personal line of credit for 14 grand and then do some work. This way we don't lose the 14. That could be an option. Person doesn't want to do that. Just use the 14, just keep doing debt snowball, keep rolling, right? And we would go for the smaller debt if the credit card does not have deferred interest. If it is, we go after that because that is going to be a lot more than, than this. This debt is already on the tail end. Not many payments left. Such a big payment. Not a whole lot of payments left on this, right? For, for the amount of time that they've had the student loan for, it was at a much higher amount. Um, so it's a, it's a tough one. We do have to run the numbers. We'll see when we get there. So nothing set in stone. Just trying to get you to see how I operate, how I think. These two are definitely on the board in terms of what we're going to tackle, right? So worst case scenario, I get denied. I got the 14K plus cash flow to throw at debt. I typically would go after the smaller one, right? And then work my way up to the next one. I would skip over the 4.94 and come to here for sure. I would not go to this. It wouldn't make sense. Too high. I wouldn't come here. Payments too low. Interest rates too low. So these two would not make sense, right? So this would be priority, priority. And then after these two are gone, then I would actually skip over the next smallest debts and actually come after do actually debt avalanche, right? Sometimes I like to reverse because I'm always hunting for cash flow. Faster I get to cash flow, the better, right? And by then, I could probably I mean, you know, reapply, get, get a proof of that debt tool, and then go from there. But if we do get approved, we definitely want to chunk no less than 13.2. I might go as high as 15, right? If I go as high as 15, 10 here, other five there, I'm willing to pay the 22 on the eight because of the amount of cash flow net that I get from here the interest savings, and then the payment would also round out around here if the balance goes to like 8,000 and some change. So that's pretty nice, okay? Then I simply do velocity banking on the personal line of credit. I get the 549 going back to the PLOC, do velocity banking for a couple of months, and then finish it off with the credit card. Once that is done, I'm going to most likely skip over the 280, skip over the 12, and come at the 11.4 at the 470, most likely. Now, there are some other potential tools that we can add to the equation to, to speed up the process. Number one, after getting approved for a PLOC, a couple months later, we could see if we can get potentially approved for a 0% credit card again because since this one is expiring, we could potentially get another one. Get approved for the main debt tool first before applying for a secondary debt tool because we want, you know, we do have credit swings. That happens when we're doing velocity banking. Credit goes up, credit goes down. So we don't want those swings to hurt us. That's why we want to go after the main debt tool first, work our way later into the secondary, third dairy, uh, secondary and third primary debt tools, okay? So 0% credit card, balance transfer, you know, we can finagle some stuff here to help get, get rid of those uh, first two debts, all right? If that's not on the table, no big deal. Next one is the 401k loan. This person does have a 401k, no loans against it. We could potentially consolidate a lot of this debt through a 401k loan. What would make sense to me based on cash flow is if the monthly payment of whatever I borrow out must be lower than the cash flow net that I get. Okay? So if I was to I don't know borrow roughly say 20 grand or something. If the payment is like extravagant, say 600 bucks, and I pay off two debts that increase my cash flow to say 600 bucks, eh, it might not make the most amount of sense, 
right? We, we may not want to do that. This person might just want to keep the money in the account, let it keep growing. Uh, it, it, it's something I, I like to have the, the best case. I don't want it to be too tight. I like, I, I've done this before with clients where we borrow from our 401ks. Um, the, the interest rate on the 401k, I like it to be l lesser than what the debt is, number one. I want the monthly payment to be extremely low so that I'm not just replacing, right? As this, the, the only thing I would be doing is debt consolidation, going from a higher rate to a lower rate. You're not really moving as fast. What really makes it attractive is if the payment is so low, the cash flow gain so high, plus I got the debt tool, the cash flow gain would go to the debt tool, and then I would just pay the monthly minimum on the 401k loan, have, it, have the debt leverage in there, that actually gets me faster to being debt free. At some point, velocity banking in this scenario will not make sense, and that'll be usually around these two right here because the rates are so low if you know if she gets a seven a six and eight percent rate on the p-lock after you know spending the next six to nine months getting rid of these two and then possibly this one and then say you're left with these two velocity banking with the p-lock is definitely probably not going to make too much sense the the rates are too small the payments are too small. The balances are at the tail end of the loan itself, meaning she's already paid the interest. So there's there's only so much interest left to be saved on 5.54%, 4.94%. So we would actually revert to debt snowball if the goal is to continue to pay off debt. If the goal shifts, people's emotions shifts all the time when I'm working with clients. Oh, I don't want to do that no more. Hey, I want to do this. I want to invest. I want to 10x. I want to invest in crypto and Bitcoin. I want to do Forex. I want to do real estate. I want to, do, I want to build a business. Okay, cool. Well, if the objective, the goal switches, we have to make sense of paying 4.94, 5.54 and paying the monthly minimum because we're planning on earning 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% returns elsewhere, right? So I'm okay with paying the interest over here because of how much I'm gaining over here or because of the business that I'm starting and the income increase potential, whatever it is, is extremely, you know, the upside is a lot better than just staying and paying off debt, okay? So I know for sure Velocity Banking is going to become less valuable when we get to these last two debts right here. Right? We, we get ahead of the debts because of these high rates here. We're simply consolidating and then velocitizing the consolidation. That's all we're doing. We're doing math. We're running the numbers. We're getting cash flow gain. Credit's going up. At some point, velocity banking will not make sense. Like I said, get to these two. So we're either going to revert to debt snowball. All that extra cash flow is probably going to be near, near like 3000 plus. We're just going to make extra payments towards the smallest debt, right? Probably this one. Uh, and then the car will be last, just like that. Get that 183, get that 280, and then go. That'll be one. The, the second route is you stop paying off debt. She could establish her IBC policy if she wants. She could go that route where she's like, all right, I'm going to send my capital to an asset first that's going to grow money over time, and then I'm going to borrow from that asset to then wipe out these debts or three is invest, you know, build a business 10 X, right? At some point we're going to get rid of the debt, but the objective might switch. Person might say, hey, look, I'm tired of making five grand a month. I want to go to 10. I mean, you spend six, to nine months, a year, one to three years, going from five to 10, five to 50K, right? You set the 10X goal. Even if you fail and get to 10K, you'll be happy. Even if you fail and get to 15K, you'll be happy. The whole point is set the 10X goal at a higher number and you have room for error. 
You don't want to set you don't want to set a goal to go from five to ten and fail and get to six point five. You might be a little discouraged. You might feel like it's too hard. But if you set such a big goal, you really give yourself the space to think big and go for it, right? So these are some of the options. We're purely speculating at this point. Here's where we're at. Here's where we can be. Here are the potential tools to leverage. Here are the debts that we're currently operating with. This is personal finance at its true, full transparency as I deliver this information to you. I hope this, I hope this video was valuable to you. God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Click the links in the description below. Check out all the different resources. You need personal credit repair, business credit repair, business credit building, business credibility. Are you ready to start your life insurance asset, right? Your high cash value life insurance. Are you looking to make investments? Are you looking to uh, you know, join a community? I, got an, I have a nice community that I've been building and molding and and uh, uh, formulating, creating partnerships, collaboration. You want to get into my program, get into my manifesto, learn this stuff from the beginning, work your way up. You know, super affordable so you don't have to feel like you're paying through your teeth to get access to this information. And to be even more fully transparent, you don't need to pay me a single dollar to learn Velocity Banking. Between myself, Mike Adams, VIP Financial, um, the Velocity Channel, I mean, you, you put all these channels together, you can learn this stuff on your own and get tremendous results. Just take a look at some of the comments in my previous videos or even the video that this one has. I promise you, my viewers are going to be like, look, I never paid Denzel a dollar. I've paid off 75000 of debt, paid off 100000 of debt, paid off 50000 of debt, never paid him a dime. And I learned the information and I was able to execute and now I'm working with him uh, or his business partner on business credit or personal credit or 10xing or I'm working on real estate investing I'm working on you know I joined the I joined his program just to give back you know I gave to his patreon just to give back because he helped me save 50 grand you know on interest over all the debts that he or she had right this is phenomenal stuff okay I'm really passionate about it my whole focus is targeting moms working with moms helping them regain their their kingdom authority helping them uh, uh, you know, f be a woman and a mom at the same time, not feel bad about being a mom, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like you can, you can have your cake and eat it too in the sense of a mother's world. You can have your house, you can be a wife, you can be a mom, you can be a woman, you can be a business owner. All those possibilities are available in the 21st century, right? We have to figure out the strategies that apply to your situation. So I'm dedicating my whole life to solving that problem, working with mothers. Now, fully transparent, I work with everybody, right? If you vibe with me, you click with me, right? You want to work, let's go. Let's do some big stuff. But just know that when it comes to me giving, when it comes to you guys giving to my channel, typically you're going to see a lot of scenarios with families, mothers, husbands, wives, right? That's who I'm targeting. If you're a single individual, hey, you're just not my target market. It's just not who I typically uh, work with. So you may not see as many scenarios. What is nice is when I do videos of my own numbers. So you can relate to a guy like myself. I'm not married. I don't have kids. So technically speaking, single, although I'm in a committed five-year relationship now. And that's going phenomenal. But you can see like my personal numbers in how I went from zero to 10, zero to 100, 10x my business, built credit, built business credit, created um, multiple different income streams to continue to provide value to you guys. So with all that being said, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be talking soon.